to your sign. Let's see, what do we got here? Legalize, free the weed. Yeah, 420, go anytime. Yeah. Free the bomb. 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 It's unfair, we need new our devices, yes. Outdated laws, outdated laws. 462.2, outdated laws. Fight, challenge. Free the bond. Coming out here in the bitter cold 
in hostile conditions with the police following us around to show your support for the Tripping Daisy, your support for legalization of marijuana, and for the end of this ridiculous war on bongs and pipes. What the heck is going on in our country exactly. when the police's top priority in town is to go after the guy selling water pipes out of his storefront? It's a shame. It's a shame on the police, and it's a shame on the people in this community who aren't out here now defending what's going on. And it's not about whether you like smoking pot. It's not about whether you use marijuana personally. It's about spending our taxpayers' dollars responsibly. It's about focusing on the people who are actually committing real crimes and leaving the non-violent, non-criminal folks who are trying to run a mainstream business to leave them alone. And the Tripping Daisy employs people that brings in money. He's a taxpayer part of the community and should be respected as such and I don't think this town can spare any jobs or any employment I don't think this town can spare any extra taxpayer dollars to play the police overtime to go be raiding stores or to be following us around on our very peaceful and friendly rally rally come on here but uh, but I think you really have to uh, appreciate what you've done coming out here on this little walk here and, and the, the gesture and the strength of what you're doing because not every town gets out to support their folks when these kind of things happen. I know some of you have traveled uh, quite a long distance to be here. I know I certainly have as well. But we're going to make history in this town. We're going to change these laws. We're going to use this as an opportunity to get into court to show that people need their bongs and pipes. They need their vaporizers for medical use. We have medical patients in this town who are relying on places like the Dripping Daisy so they don't have to smoke a joint, so they can use a water pipe, so they can use a vaporizer, so they can access their medicine in a safer way. And even if you don't have a medical note, we know that vaporizers and water pipes make marijuana safer. And if the police's concern is really about community safety, then they should be encouraging those who are using cannabis to do it in the safest manner possible. That often means in a water pipe or in a vaporizer or a way like that. And so uh, we're going to change this law. We're going to make history in this country right here in Kirkland Lake because we're not going to let them get away with this. And, and I am so proud that he has reopened and that he's continuing to stand strong. And we got to make sure this does not happen again. You know, probably somebody called the police and said, I'm not happy. There's a bong shop in town. Somebody probably called in and complained. And they might have been responding to that complaint. But you know what? They've got a much bigger complaint from the people of Kirkland Lake now against that raid. And they need to know that, yeah, sure, there is a law in the books called 462.2, but police across the country have made the rational decision to ignore this law, to deprioritize it, to put them at the bottom of the list. And we want police in Kirkland Lake to do the same thing. They should be focusing their valuable time and resources on real crime, real, real criminals, and leave the cannabis community alone. We just want to be part of the community, we want to pay our taxes, we want to be respectable mainstream businesses, and that's what we're going to be doing, and that's how we're going to make change here in Kirkland Lake. Absolutely. Woo! Yes, Dana. Yeah. 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 I invite you all to continue this march down to the, the Kirkland Lake Inn and Suites, where there will be coffee and some snacks served, and the bar at that time will also be open for your enjoyment should you partake. And I want to say thank you for Kim for helping make this happen, for putting all the work behind it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here now. Awesome. Awesome. You can all find me online, and I'll give you that information back at the hotel. So we're going to carry this on right over to the KL Inn and Suites, where we can all sit down for Discussion. Let's get the Sounds picture great. before we go. Yes. yes. Let's get, we got yes. a couple of cameras, but I want to get, get the officer to come over and take it for us. <laughs> <laughs> they should. No? They should. Come they on should. over, guys. Take a picture. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, that's the, in the red pickup truck. Oh, yeah. Dana has to get in, obviously. And here, I'll just give you my mind, you just push the thing yeah, Let me just run over there Man. and get in there. Yeah, right in the middle. There you go. Woo! Communicate. Yes. Oh, nice. Good stuff. Yes. Right on. Yes. Oh, right. Perfect. Way to go, Kim. Right. Mr. Sitter. Oh, woo! 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 Woo
There's no reason for a bomb shop to be raided. That is the number one method that Health Canada, as well as the Canadian Mental Health Association, better known as CAMH, recommends you consume your marijuana through a vaporizer or through a bomb. How are we supposed to buy these supplies if we don't have shops to do it? We need these shops as patients and as recreational users. I feel they have the right to partake in a way that is better for their health than consuming it through smoking. So bomb shops are a needed thing in the north. They're a needed thing in every small town in this country, and this law must be stopped. At this time, I would like to say thank you to Dana for coming all the way up from BC, Toronto, and then up here to support us. and thanks so much for Kim for getting everybody together and making this happen. And just remember that you're making history. When you get up there and you march, you're part of a battle that's been going on for a long time, but one that we are going to win, one that we are getting closer to winning every day. We've overturned these ridiculous, uh, or, or got these bond laws to be pretty much ignored all across the country, but you have just as much rights here in Kirkland Lake as we do in Vancouver or Toronto or any of the other cities where there's dozens and dozens of bong shops and many marijuana dispensaries and all kinds of other uh, elements of the cannabis culture that are available, vapor lounges and things like that. And you have every as much right to have those things here in Kirkland Lake as we do in any other part of the country, absolutely. I can't wait. And, and getting out there and standing up and showing that is, is very important and, and coming out and doing this. But don't let this just be the only day, you know. I know if you're here and you're marching out there, it's because you believe in this. So take the spirit and tomorrow, give your mayor a call and say, hey, what's going on? I don't want to see that happen again. Give a call or an email to the local paper and say, hey, come, come here, we're down there today. And send them a photo if you've got one from the event, because I'm going to send them mine. But make sure that you continue to push this issue. We don't want to see any more raids <laughs> happen again. We want the police to learn their lesson. People of Kirkland Lake and the surrounding areas want them to leave bong shops alone, especially the Tripping Daisy. We're not going to put up with this as a community, and, and we're going to keep the pressure on. And you can and will make positive change happen. You'll be able to tell your kids and grandkids how you help to overturn the marijuana laws in this country so that no one ever had to worry ever again about going to prison or being arrested for what herbal medicine they use or for what plants they choose to grow in their garden, or for what kind of bongs and pipes they happen to, to prefer to use, right? Let's make sure that these laws end with our generation. We have an opportunity, we have an opening, and what's happened here is actually given us an opportunity to shed some light on the kind of persecution that goes on, often too often in the darkness where nobody sees it. But we're able to reflect some light back on this, to show the police and to show this community that we're going to stand behind the Tripping Daisy, stand behind Darren, we're going to not let this continue, and, uh, and you know, it's not just you here, people all in the surrounding area, people all across Canada are paying attention. That's partly why I came here to help draw a little bit more of that spotlight on there, so that you know that we've got your back. Uh, uh, the rest of us, the cannabis community across Canada has got your back here in Kirkland Lake. We're going to try to help you stand up for this. We're going to raise money. We're going to get media support. We're going to do everything we can. Uh, but you got to stand up for it too, and that's what I see here, so it makes me very happy uh, to be part of this community and to be able to be here and share this with you guys. So give yourself a round of applause. Thank you very much for coming. Everybody, I'll try to cover a couple of things. Um, one, just like how much it means to me to have like the biggest players in Canada as far as the legalization of cannabis here in Kirkland Lake. We try not to cry, um, but like I mean, it's funny that that kind of thing uh, is so huge to me, uh, especially with all this going down. Uh, the community, everybody that's uh, been here to help me, um, you know, it's amazing. Uh, the retail. Uh, business is new to me, so like I have a lot of experience in office life. And one of the things I recently learned recently is like when things don't go your way, you kind of gotta look in the mirror instead of looking at the window and like other reasons to blame what happened. And I tried my hardest to look at what I really did wrong. And uh, you know, unless it was uh, not lying to the 
an undercover cop about what was happening, then I hope you understand what I'm trying to yeah. say. You didn't do uh, anything no, wrong. No, there was no any, reason yeah. to find. So, um, but up until then, the community, Kirkland Lake, I want to stay here. I mean, the community's been amazing. We've run tons of fundraisers already. Like, I only opened in August, and between myself and my customers in the store, we've already raised 1300 bucks for animals, for advocates for animals. Um, <laughs> Up the Trippin' Days bowling team, and we're proud to be in last place. Doesn't matter, but we're in last place. Um, but I try to, you know, I bought a home in Kirkland Lake when I moved here. That was not the plan, but I have. And, uh, and you're doing good for the community, and we man. want him to stay. know what's going to come out of it or what's what's going out of it but what shows your character is how you react to that stuff and how you deal with those challenges when they come your way it's no fun having the cops come and take all your stuff it's no fun having to deal with those kind of things it's very frightening and scary to have to go through that kind of stuff and to be able to come back and say damn it i'm not going to shut down i'm going to restock i'm going to stay in business it is not easy to do it takes a lot of strength of character and i've only just met darren and met a lot of you folks but i I'm, it's great to see that he can see that he's got people in the community behind him willing to stand up for that and not do it by yourself. It's a very lonely feeling when the cops come in and take your stuff. And uh, and so you're doing great work, man. And it's wonderful to see you rising to the occasion and standing up for this and growing and, and learning what you can really do. Well, this has been a huge boost for sure. So uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. Good. Uh, the shop will grow again and it will be what it was once before. And we'll continue the fight. And that's It'll it. It'll be better than ever. It'll be bigger than ever. Right on! Better. on Young Street alone. Uh, so it was thousands of shops across Canada. A lot of them were just threatened out of business. They, I don't know how many specifically were raided. They sent out a lot of letters to a lot of shops and threatened them and got them to shut down that way, but it was thousands of stores across Canada. And the law also bans you know, High Times magazines, row books. You couldn't get a High Times anywhere in Canada for a long time. Uh, uh, even Chicha Chong movies technically were, were banned under this law and hard to get. And, uh, and it's been fought for quite a while. We've overturned a lot of it. But the law is still on the books. We've got to overturn this final part of it. And that's what's the opportunity the police have given us here today to do that. Again, this law off the books forever. Yep. Taking this one all the way and getting it striking down so that nobody has to go through this again. That's the goal. And we need the support of the community to do it. So I'm so happy that you all came up today, and I pray for your continued support through the end of this trial. Yeah, so make sure you talk to your mayor, talk to your newspapers, talk to your friends and neighbors, spread the word. What we got here today should just be the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of an awareness and thing. Mm -hmm. Right on, good stuff. Just just thank you, Lee. Uh, anybody <laughs> knows how to get in touch with me for further details, I'm on Facebook, Northern Ontario Kim, or Cannabis Information with Kim. On Facebook. Right on, go Team Cannabis! Yes. <laughs>